Hello, I'm Brent Height, and welcome back to Brent Height Outdoors. Got a lot of feedback from my last video. It was a Buffalo River trip video. Many of you watched it, and I had some requests to do some follow-up videos like gear reviews and to explain what kind of kayaks that I used on the river. So be looking for those in the future. Um, this video is going to be the start of a series of videos that I hope to shoot. Many of you that know me know that uh, I spend a lot of time outdoors, and I've spent a lot of time exploring. I went looking for a group of like-minded people to share some of my experiences with, which led me to uh, a conference in Nashville, Tennessee. It was called the Birthright Conference. It was uh, hosted by Timothy Al Alberino, who wrote a book, a very interesting book, by the way. It intrigued me, so I wanted to try to get to know some of the people that are associated with his team and... Uh, some get to know some like-minded people and get them to help me do some research. So um, I'll leave a link to uh, Tim's book in the description. Uh, it's a very, very interesting book. I highly recommend that you read it. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. So while I was at the conference, uh, I ended up meeting two people. Um, I met more people than that, but I met two that I ended up working with. And so we're going to start shooting this series of um videos doing some archaeological surveys and some sites in Arkansas at first, and we'll probably move some of the operation to other states uh, later on in the future. So having said that, the first person that I got to know was uh, Mondo Gonzalez. Mondo Gonzalez is one of the hosts of Prophecy Watchers, um, which is a television show, and they have a YouTube channel, and um, Mondo is actually an archaeologist, and researcher. Um, the second person that I met was Doug Thornton, who has a, a radio talk show called America Vindictive, and he also has a YouTube channel and is a researcher and explorer. So we've decided to further investigate some of these sites, and our objective is to study and research the pre-Columbian mound builder and cliff dweller cultures that lived in North America. So the first site that I'm going to share to you is a site that we call the IRC cave. It's in north central Arkansas in the foot of the Ozark Mountains. So we're here at the IRC cave. We're in north central Arkansas in the Ozark Mountains. There's some petroglyphs on the wall in this cave. And there's also behind me, which you can't see it, it's kind of dark. I'll show you a better view of it. But behind me, there's a written language on this wall, which I believe to be Ogham. Ogham is a Celtic writing that was used from 350 AD to 950 AD. So if this in fact is Ogham, what that would prove is that some people from England were actually here in North Central Arkansas at least 500 years before Columbus came to the North America. So that would be pretty significant. So we're going to try to find out if in fact this is Ogham and if any of you out there know how to read this, please contact us. So behind me is a place that's been concreted in by the local community. They felt that it was a liability issue, but the hole that you see behind me actually was the entrance into another cavern on the inside of the cave that we're standing in. And I've been told that there's an exit place on the other side of the mountain, so we're gonna look for that also while we're here. 
and we're going to try to discover if there is a tunnel all the way through this cave. Another interesting feature in this cave is what I've been told is a burial tomb. You can see that there is a round place that appears to have been dug out. There's a hole in the center of it. And a friend of mine and I were interviewing some locals that lived here long ago. And we interviewed one Native American woman who said that her grandmother told her this was a tomb and said that there was an evil Indian chief buried in this tomb. They buried him in here because they didn't want his evil spirit to be able to escape. So I don't know if that's fact or fiction, but it's an interesting story by one of the locals here. Where are we at? We're at, what's our latitude here? Probably 32, 30, 34? 32 to 4, somewhere in there. So Polaris is going to be at that angle in the sky. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, the for, further north you go, the further higher it gets to mm -hmm. where it's above you. So Polaris is going to be, so it'd be interesting to see what the angle would be. But if you had Polaris there, it'd be easy to demonstrate it to see if it was true because you'd have to step back a little bit, but then just record, do it a little uh, time I can just, lapse. I can ask him. Yeah, ask him because again, if Polaris is here at the equinox, things are 90 degrees. They're, they're at, you know, they're coming up not perfectly in the east. Right. Oh, right. Oh yeah, Orion as well. I mean, they right. clearly, Orion was set up with that. I mean, they... So, anyway, and, and in the northern hemisphere, you can only see Orion about six months out of the year, and it's in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Starts about November. You start right. seeing it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's it's actually right now. If you get out there about just before sunrise, you can see it. Yeah, but it's it's exiting. It's, it's just fading away it's fading, now. Yeah. So until November. But it's in the peak of winter is when you see yep. it. The most bright. Come out, and you're like, and it gets dark earlier, and you're like, at probably midnight. And you're like, look at that, straight up. It's beautiful.
So what we were just discussing is a place called the Arkansas Sphinx. The Arkansas Sphinx is a rock formation on top of a mountain near Dover, Arkansas. This rock formation has a peculiar hole in, in the rock that I theorized was man-made. Um, a Facebook friend of mine named Carlton McDaniel, who is an excellent photographer, by the way, took a picture of this formation at night, and it uh, it was a it was a long exposure exposure picture, which uh, in the night sky when you're taking a long exposure, the stars leave a trail. Well, uh, the star Polaris, which is the North Star, um, remains stationary, and all the other stars in the sky revolve around it. So when you take a long exposure picture, the the stars seem to make a circle. And I noticed that there was one star in the center of that hole of the rock formation that stayed still. And I said, that's got to be Polaris. So I theorized that this hole was deliberately put into this rock uh, to somehow illustrate the rising of Polaris. And at the time, we didn't know this to be true, so we had to go test the theory. And that led us on the on the road to Dover, and it was a long, steep climb up the mountain. I just about didn't make it. I had a Marine behind me pushing me, and I had a archaeologist in front of me guiding me. I had a torn tendon in my foot at the time I attempted to climb this mountain, and it was no less torn when I got back down. me but uh <coughs> if we happen to run into a bigfoot i get a scalp first i got a two million dollar award i won out of oklahoma and it looks look at the trees like oh, we're probably gonna get eaten up early tonight so this is what is known as the arkansas sphinx and uh, we're up about 900 feet off the road about three quarters of a mile so it's pretty steep grade coming up loose loose trail but definitely worth it when you come to see this um, you can see here there's a little hole up here which is nice and then on the back side there's another nice little feature where you get to sit in there and it, what we've learned and we've verified now is when you're on the back side uh, it is a little archaeo astronomy for us it is lined up directly with the celestial pole which we know as the north star and polaris so we don't we don't know exactly you know if this was man-made or not but it, I find it interestingly and convenient that it's lined up exactly with the with the North Star as we see it now. Okay, Mondo, what were we able to confirm now? So when we were originally starting, we were looking to see whether um, Polaris was lined up in this particular hole of this known as the Arkansas Sphinx. So we waited till stars came out. We found Polaris. We found the right angle, and absolutely, it lines up right in the center of this hole. Right in the center. So we got great pictures, not only of Polaris, but of the Big Dipper on the top, pointing directly at yeah. Polaris in the center. So this particular, um, this particular, I don't know, monument, if you wanted to call it like that, we don't know exactly what it is, but we do know that uh, if we were to go down, it'd be interesting to research more down below and see how it's lined up exactly with the star, if there was anything below. And what were you able to see with the uh, the UV light? Because that was trippy. So, yeah, that was even uh, more interesting in the sense that we saw, like, it would look like uh, on the on the Sphinx itself from the other side, from the north side, we could see, like, a almost like a picture of, like, a heart or something on the Sphinx as well as on the on the front or on the mouth, which looks like a mouth. I mean, I know we're envisioning here, but it looked with the UV like there was teeth there. So we were kind of going back and forth and wondering, is it the angles or was there maybe some paint that was originally on it or something? But it really brings it out with the UV light. Do you, do you know if uh, the Native American tribes ever painted rocks to look like certain objects or animals? 
Well, as far as I understand, they definitely were painting things with certain minimal colors, um, as well as some of the petroglyphs were used with paint. So, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. And where we're at here. Did the original Sphinx have paint on it as well? As far as we understand, yes. That it, and it was fully, um, I don't want to phrase it, it was, it was big, but and it had a lot more definition to it. And especially like if you look at the pyramids, the pyramids were covered with a, like a white, uh, shiny um, limestone. And so what we see now is like the rundown version. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, this has been a really cool night. It's been I fun. Mean, we were able to really see some stuff in the stars. It's a beautiful, clear night. And uh, I, I kind of had my, my hopes that we would see it, but I didn't think we really would mm -hmm. because of the time of year. But we saw it. We, yeah. we saw Polaris. We got pictures to prove it. Yeah. Uh, the pictures will be in on this video. That way you guys can see it. This is what we're doing late at night up at the top of a mountain looking at the Arkansas Sphinx. Thanks, everybody. So we're up here at the Arkansas Sphinx. Uh, this man, Brent Height, he's the one who motivated us to get up here. And uh, Brent, how old are you? 54. Yeah. Age is just a number, guys. You can get up here and you can see some of this cool stuff. Here we got a uh, Mondo himself. So just up here, you know, being able to uh, see some really cool stuff, fellowship, and uh, just enjoy what it is that God's given us in this world. So stay motivated, get up off your excuses and have an adventure.